Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. In one of my earlier videos, I hinted at coming back here and having a deep dive, a look around at this place. So if you caught the video on the Hopewell culture in Chillicothe, Ohio, we're back in that area, down in Adams County, try to have a look around at the Serpent Mound. Thanks for joining me today. Another interesting, unusual fact is that Serpent Mound sets within a very large impact crater from a meteor rate. Some of the facts here says it hit more than 256 million years ago and it spans about nine miles across. And they wonder if it had anything to do with the Native Americans choosing this site to build Serpent Mound. One of North America's most Spectacular effigy mound, Serpent Mound, is a gigantic earthen sculpture representative of a snake. Go in and take a look around the museum if we're open here. seems to have been built with astronomical alignments in mind. Serpent Mound is aligned to where the sun sets on the summer solstice. If you stand at the neck and sight across the center of the oval, which I think was the serpent's eye, and there once was a stone altar there that had evidence of burning, that alignment from the neck across that altar points directly at the setting sun on the summer solstice. And there's more. Three major bends in the serpent form avenues roughly aligned to the summer and winter solstice sunrises. And on the spring and autumn equinoxes, both the sun rises and the sun sets. Now, ground-penetrating radar and new technologies are allowing us to look literally into the earth and back in time. Now, we detected what looked to me to be uh, a new undulation in the shape of the serpent coming off of the uh, right side of the neck, right below where the head attaches to the body. And this wasn't just a little squiggle in the magnetic data, this was a full-on shape of a coil that looked exactly like the shape and size and geometry of the other coils. It doesn't seem to fit with today's iteration of the serpent. This coil was associated with a different version of the serpent than we see today. And I think I can say with some degree of certainty that th this is a case of them probably changing the plan. Indicate Serpent Mound was built by the Adena culture. That would make it more than 2,000 years old, a thousand years before the Fort Ancient people. The magnitude of the achievement of what these ancient people crafted on that bluff speaks to some very important purpose. It wasn't built by a couple of people on a lark. It wasn't built for frivolous reasons. It has some fundamental, probably religious purpose that it fulfilled for the people that built it. No matter what ancient culture built Serpent Mound, and for what purpose, for unknown reasons,
reasons, this block overlooking Ohio Rush Creek became sacred ground for over 1,000 years, and perhaps much longer. To properly honor the Native American legacy of this site, think as if you were entering any sacred site that is familiar to you in your own background. But we do not really know the entire story of this place. In fact, we know only a little. Long ago, engineering and artistry combined to bring celestial alignments down to Earth. We can only imagine the ceremonies that may have been performed here. Yet even visitors from distant lands and far different cultures can see in Serpent Mound a common thread that weaves through the fabric of all humanity. The serpentine bends of the river below give no hint of the serpent above. The tightly coiled tail is frozen in time, but for how long? Its open mouth never to devour the egg, if it is an egg. The giant earthen spine drapes over a rock escarpment in southern Ohio, the sinuous backbone of the largest effigy mound on Earth. Still, the origin and meaning behind Serpent Mound continue to defy explanation. It is precisely constructed, yet this true-to-form giant snake as unlike anything else in the United States or in the world. Who built it and why? For over a century and a half, these recurring questions have haunted both archaeologists and visitors alike. Something drove the ancient builders to move thousands of tons of earth, basketball by basketball. In Ohio, when you live here in Ohio, all these little red dots represent mound sites. So wherever you're at in Ohio, there could be mounds close to you. I don't know if you call it controversy or speculation of why Serpent Mount was built here, but we have three different mound building cultures. You have the Fort Ancient culture, you have the Hopewell culture, and clear back at the beginning you have the Adena culture of the mound building Native Americans, and there's a lot of speculation of the origin how old is it truly there's so many things that could have contaminated the data that's been used by doing carbon dating at the site so there's a lot of unanswered questions So here at the park, the National Park for Serpent Mound, this is a pretty nice facility. To be honest, there's a blacktop trail that goes all the way around the actual mound site. And you can get pretty close to the edge of the mound. So I'm here maybe three or four feet from the actual edge. And you can see it rolls up. Uh, it looks like it may be four, five, six feet to some of the higher points and 
comes up this hill and it wraps around and goes back to the right. That's towards the tail. Back in there over that high spot. And then down this way, it's coming back. That's looking towards the head up there on top of that hill. And it kind of rolls over down to where the overlook is. Now I was hoping that they would have this project done. They started they say they started restoring this tower which I shot video here a couple years ago and I was hoping to be able to get up there and shoot video today but it does not look like they've even started the project unfortunately I really find this interesting that I can know for certain that I'm standing in an area, maybe even an exact spot, because the people that built this mound had to be right here. They had to be here working, carrying dirt, laboring, building this mound, really moving. It's, it captures my interest. another interesting fact another interesting tidbit that the ground penetrating radar has detected evidence that there's a missing coil that quite possibly the original design of this effigy mound had a coil in this area that came out and the evidence shows that there's a very good chance that the original design was scrapped for a new one. This is the round part. The speculation is like speculation being what does it represent? An egg, a ball, does it represent the earth? This is what the snake has its mouth open to consume. What does it represent? What were they trying to tell the god or the gods or whoever this is built to be seen by? It's like a bunch of unanswered questions for me always when it comes to this, this culture, this Native American culture. This is looking back from the head, looking back towards the body, and you can see how almost it looks perfectly level out through there. The mound itself, and it's built on an uphill slope, on the side slope, and is just the architectural work of this time period and the alignments for the solstice, the positioning of the sun. You know, there was, a, was a evidence of an altar that was built right there on the other side of the circle in that area where the head is that faced toward the sunset and an alignment to measure different times of the year. And Again, it's more questions that I have. How did they know that? How did they figure that out to build it in that position? So over here on this side, with the head and the open mouth looking back, it's built right at the edge of what is basically a sheer cliff. There is a waterway, a river that runs through here, I believe. Let me go down here and take a look. But what I've, what I've noticed is that the majority of these mound sites, 
and there is a lot of them in southern Ohio, around Cincinnati, Portsmouth, uh, I believe there's some even over around Marietta, are all built along waterways, Scioto River, Miami River, and those waterways were definitely used for transportation, a way of moving goods, probably moving people also. This is basically a sheer drop-off. And I was talking to a visitor here at the site, and I just jokingly said, I just wonder if you were not being cooperative and you were tired of carrying dirt if you wound up going over the cliff. Just one more unanswered question. Another shot of the head open mouth towards the open circle. This is the area where the altar was built. Evidence of ceremonial fires have been found here. So this shot here is from right behind the head looking back towards the tail. You can see how it kind of rolls down this hillside and it gets down there to where the observation tower is and it kind of hooks off to the right. There's always that question of how did they do this? How did they get these measurements and get them so precise? Because looking at it without getting your measuring device out, your yardstick, having somebody walk it off, it all looks like it's even from bend to bend, from turn to turn, it all looks equal in its construction. So this might be speculation on my part, but this part of the mound, this is up on top of the hill, close to where the tower is. Actually, I'll show the tower here in a minute. But this section right here looks like maybe it might be a little bit higher. And I think maybe that's because it's up on top of this hill. Well, that section over there looks pretty high also. But as you go down the hill, down there on that bottom, on that bottom left right there, and I came by there, it looked like it may be just a little lower. And I'm just speculating that it's because of the position that it's in lower in that little lower area. Maybe it's eroded away a little bit. This is straight down. It is a huge drop off. We're at the tail looking at another drop off. It's another one of those things that is interesting to me as to why this site was chosen. Why did they choose to build this effigy mound here almost like on a bluff and inside a impact crater from a meteorite? try to get up where we can actually see the curled tail again there's just so many unanswered questions for me So I wasn't able to get up into the observation tower today because for the last year it's been under construction and it looks like they're really not making any progress on it. 
I was hoping to get up here and get some video from up high so you could actually see everything. So I'm probably going to resort to some of my older footage from up there that's not real good. So I apologize, but it'll give you an idea of the sheer size of this place. Here at the Serpent Mound site, there are three burial mounds. This one is the largest. Uh, two of these mounds are from the Adena culture. And the Adena culture, as you can see on that sign, 600 BC to 100 AD. And then the third mound is from the Fort Ancient culture. And this burial mound here, this is the second Adena culture burial mound. This one is just very small in comparison to the earlier one that we looked at. It's right off the edge of the parking lot and there's a big open area here and it's close to the pavilion. But this is a site where possibly two different villages were or they may have been just gathering places for ceremonies that were held at the Serpent Mound, but there's been evidence found here of the Adena culture and of the Fort Ancient culture right here in this area. And here's a shot looking back towards both, this, both the Adena Mounds and the smaller one right here in the front in the foreground and then in the back across the parking lot is the larger of the two Adena Mounds and this one here I believe the park officer told me that there were six grave sites in that mound. I just wanted to take this time to say that this park is very nice. It looks to be very well maintained. The grass is cut. We have blacktop parking lots. We have a really nice pavilion if you want to come and take in the mounds here, have lunch quite possibly have a family gathering here and they have nice facilities and the restrooms have running water flush toilets and it's a very cool place to visit and this is the third of the burial mounds here at the Serpent Mound site and this one is from the Fort Ancient Culture AD 1000 to 1650 and this one, this I find this to be another interesting thing about this place is this one is kind of like a little considerable distance from the other mounds. I'll walk around the other side and get a shot. This third mound sets up on some high ground and away from the other two burial mounds which the smaller mound is almost straight ahead to the left. And then the larger one, kind of hard to see, but it's almost directly behind that building. Off to the right, you can see part of it with the picnic table there. So yeah, this is, uh, I highly recommend if you're into history, or if you're into the mound building culture, uh, if you like nature, you can just come out and enjoy the day out here in the park. Eight dollars to park. The museum is free. Small museum. Gives you some of the history of the Serpent Mound. It is a learning experience for me. There's a lot of information to take in, but still a lot of unanswered questions of ancient America. Some people refer to it as the lost history of Ohio. Again, thank you for stopping by. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing, helping me grow the channel. If you're visiting the channel, thank you for taking the time to watch the video clear to the end. 
you like what you see, please subscribe. I've got a ton of stuff I'm working on to come out in the future. Again, thanks again, and it's good to be alive.